Welcome to my personal educational ideology as part of the EDU 224 module from Vision to Reality. This module has widened my knowledge by teaching me about many other educational ideologies from a range of factors such as economic, political, cultural and social aspects, which influence various educational ideologies. An educational ideology may be described as any package of educational ide ideas held by a group of people about formal arrangements for education. Before studying this module, my ideology of education was based upon my own experiences, including my personal experience of schooling and volunteer and placement observations. I believe that this purpose of education was to provide children with high status knowledge so that they feel able to take the standardised tests to gain qualifications relevant for their future. I also believe that this allowed children to make informed choices about the subjects they achieve best in and enjoy the most, so that they could make appropriate adult choices about their future careers based on being provided with a range of knowledge from the national curriculum as was apparent in my experience of schooling. For me, I feel that my experience could have been better if there wasn't such an emphasis on the importance of achieving at least the national average grades, and in my case to excel them in the standardised testing of GCSEs and A-levels to improve my school's position in the regional league tables. This emphasis on excelling my high target grades made me feel immense pressure, not only from the school and my teachers, but from my family members and myself too. This feeling of pressure often made me feel unengaged with my learning and led me to having extremely low self-esteem and made me doubt my own academic abilities. Robertson stated that, Many highly talented, brilliant, creative people think that they're not because the thing that they were good at at school wasn't valued or was actually stigmatised. My current educational ideologies align somewhat with Ken Robinson's idea that the method of schooling is factory-like and cannot meet the needs of the children who do not excel in standardised testing but may be extremely talented in what is viewed as a non-academic subject resulting in demotivation and disengagement for a child moving through their educational journey. This module has helped me to inform my new educational ideologies which moves away from the sole use of standardised testing to determine a child's intelligence through memory and more towards a child-centred, holistic approach to learning so that the unique needs of the child and well-being can be met and that a stress-free environment can nurture the child, allowing a positive and happy schooling experience to be maintained for all children within the education system. I agree with the main principles of assessment that Montessori and Steiner have both adopted in their schooling curriculums, that summative assessment causes stress and academic pressures, and without this type of assessment, learning can be made a fun, enjoyable experience, which results in higher self-confidence and belief, keeping the child engaged with their learning while the teachers concentrate on the development of the child. In Montessori and Steiner curriculums, they both leave summative assessment until the later years of secondary school, when a child is roughly 15 years old. Steiner students take formal exams over a two-year period where they are ready to, which relieves the pressure of having all of their exams at the end of the last year, as seen in the current mainstream curriculum in England. This relief of pressure not only benefits the well-being of the child, but enables the child to perform better academically in these exams. Steiner's principle of assessment resonates with my own as I feel that primary stats have far too much pressure for these young children. From my own placement observations, I have noticed some children who are in year two who could not write their letters the right way round and are expected to sit their SATs within the next two months. This not only shows that SATs may be premature for children of these young ages, but it puts pressure on the child as well as the teacher to get these young children ready in time to sit these exams. I also believe that children should take GCSEs and A-levels, but also should be allowed to study BTEC subjects which have no exams within them and just involves coursework. This has recently been changed by the current government and now every subject includes an exam for the end of the course. I believe this does not help the children who cannot cope with the pressures of formal exams. Some children may be studying for roughly 20 exams in a short period of time and this may cause feelings of low self-esteem if they cannot attain and may increase underperformance in schools. This notion goes against my personal ideology that the well-being of the child, the utmost important aspect of a successful education and this can directly influence the achievements of the child in every aspect of their education. In my opinion, formal exams should be spread over the course and be taken when a child is ready, but the importance of these exams still stands as they prepare pupils for their careers in later life where exams are still used in many professions. This notion of assessment with the consideration of a child's well-being resonates with the main educational ideologies of Finland. The holistic development of the child is a key principle of the education used in Finnish schools, 
while adopting a child-centred approach to education allowing effective learning for each child. In Finland, the formal schooling starting age is seven, three years later than England. This later starting age gives child an adequate amount of time to explore the world around them to gain a sense of social and emotional capabilities through play, which I believe is an essential experience for young children to develop individuality so that they are more neurologically ready for schooling at the age of seven. I think play should be more common for the younger children in English schools as Whitebread's research found that when children are allowed more years to play, it has a positive effect on their academic performance and the child's well-being. It is because of this that I feel the Finnish education system is far more superior than that of England and has many benefits for their children regarding equal opportunities to succeed. The lack of summative assessments concentrating on the needs of each child to ensure that they have a successful education and gain extensive knowledge leading to skills for life. In addition, the Finnish education system targets a child-centred approach and I feel this approach to learning is an essential pedagogy to adopt. This ensures the needs of the child are met as well as teaching correct transferable skills for the future. Another aspect which emphasises the child-centred approach is the Montessori ideology that a child should be given the correct learning environment for them to effectively learn within. This includes the principle that children should be left alone to discover and engage in learning, as Montessori believed that regardless of the activity, if a child is engaged, they are learning. This is the reason that I believe children should have a longer period in their schooling day, free to choose and engage in their own learning as it allows a child to learn by discovery, which can teach self-reliance and also Robinson found that this fosters creativity and imagination, which is key to an innovative education. The learning environment may adopt many approaches to ensure multisensory learning experiences, including informal learning such as museums and galleries, outdoor learning and the use of digital technology to enhance the learning experience. These different approaches to the learning environment can mean that there is a type of learning to engage with every child so that the learning can be productive and effective. From my own experience, I learned best on school trips as the alternative environment for schooling fulfilled my sense of wonder and allowed focus a focused interaction that could not be achieved in my school. These trips enable an alternative method of teaching by passionate professionals which inspire the children to engage in the learning. In my classroom, I would try to support the learning with frequent school trips and educational facilities as I feel that this encourages a meaningful environment that the children need to thrive. Furthermore, the use of technology in the 21st century is at an all-time high. Even though ed technology is associated with negative things such as cyberbullying and increased rates of low self-esteem, technology can have its benefits within the teaching profession. The use of technology is in most aspects of everyday life and involved in most, if not all, careers. The Steiner Waldorf curriculum disallows the use of technology up until the child reaches secondary school age and it can be negatively distracting for pupils from the learning which occurs in the real world. I disagree with this as I believe that the technology can aid a teacher by offering different ways of explaining concepts to children by visually or by auditory representation and can provide another resourceful learning tool which can encourage independent learning by the child so that they can satisfy their own needs and feel empowered by being in control of their own learning. In my classroom, the use of digital technology will be encouraged as it can provide another way of learning with the extensive amount of applications which can be found on them to aid in the learning of the child. They are a learning tool, however I would not encourage long periods of time spent on them as they may distract the pupil from the learning task. The use of various environments to learn with them is beneficial to pupils' holistic development and it is due to this variation in education that I believe by encouraging this it allows a child to flourish in their learning journey and develop a love for learning. In conclusion, this module has helped me to discover a range of educational ideologies which have inspired my current educational ideology. I can now see that my educational experience gave me a very restricted way of learning as it was in favour of standardised testing to boost the school's league table position. I have also seen from my volunteering observations that this method of teaching with an aim to get children to pass the national average grades is still apparent. In my future, I aspire to adopt the principles from a range of ideologies to incorporate within my teaching style. This in includes aspects from Montessori, Steiner, Robinson, the Finnish education system and the importance of variation of the learning environment. 
to ensure that I create a holistic style of teaching for my pupils where the children are at the centre of their learning. I believe this could be achieved by a later school starting age which can allow the children to discover a world around them through play and develop a sense of work before formal education and a reduction in standardised testing so that child can enjoy their learning experience and develop their love for learning. I hope that when I have my own class I can use these methods in my personal ideology to develop the child holistically as well as academically to ensure a positive learning experience for the future generations of children which enables them to thrive and feel inspired by their time in education and feel prepared for their futures.